Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 102 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. My name is Lewis Spears and fuck grilled. Fuck grilled. I'll say it again. Just so you know, the tone of this episode is going to stay consistent throughout the entire hour. Fuck Grilled. Fuck the franchise. Fuck their burgers. Fuck their employees. But most of all, fuck their closing system. Or, not system. Hang on. Closing. How they cl- You know when, when a store closes a store, what's that called? I know it's called closing, but like how they actually close. <laughs> this is, uh, I started off so strong and now I've just forgotten what a word is. Fuck their closing process. Okay? Because, dude, I, I can, I know I've talked about this on radio once, I think, but holy shit, it happened again. Three times now. Alright? There is a grilled burger joint. It's a burger franchise. If you don't have it from wherever the fuck you're listening from, I envy you. All right? It's a burger joint. Really good burgers. They make great fucking food. So, of course, every now and then, when I finish the show, I'm like, oh, I'll get a burger. Love a late night burger. We finish it like eight something. So I'm like, oh, I'll get burgers for fucking dinner, right? Three times in a row... This has happened to me when I've gone into this fucking grilled. They've told me that they're closed, but they're not. Okay? So, picture this, right? You really want a burger. You've been sitting in a room for two hours, not swearing, which is so hard. So fucking hard to do is to sit down for two hours and not say cunt. That's the hardest part about radio. If you listen to our show, there are so many times where where I would start a sentence that would normally end with fuck or cunt and then have to pivot away from it. Oh, he really messed it up there. Oh, that guy's a silly duffer. <laughs> Right? So obviously I'm working up a lot of hunger by put it by by converting all of my brain power to not saying cunt nationwide. So I want a burger and three times in a row this shit has happened to me. I go to I cr- I look at grilled, the lights are on. The sign is on. The door is open. There are people sitting outside on the chairs, on the tables eating burgers. The lights in the store are on. The employees are in there in uniform. All of the chairs inside the restaurant are on the floor, not on the table. They are fucking open. I walk in and I go, hey, let me get a... And then they go, sorry, I'm closed. Oh, you're closed, are you? Are you you closed? Really? Because when I walked in here, the door was open. But you're closed, are you? Did you have the sign that you can flip from open to closed? What was that on? Open, was it? Are there customers sitting down eating your food that you just made? Yes. Is the fridge light still on? Another classic teller of whether or not a store is open. Dude, if I walked into a fucking shop and the door was open but the fridge lights were off, so I could see that the fridge was still on, but you would turn the light displaying the product in the fridge off. I'm like, that's closed. Man, there are so many ways to indicate that a store is closed. It's insane. Shut the door if you're closed. If you're closed, take your uniform off. If you're closed, flip the open sign to closed. Put the chairs on the table. Turn the lights off. Turn the giant sign outside off. Don't, don't fucking change nothing and then just one day tell me, oh, we're closed. 
especially because, guys, I've come in every time five minutes, five to ten minutes before closing. And don't give me any of this bullshit of, oh, they're, they're probably cleaning up. Because no, fuck you, cleaning starts after you're closed. All right, so all you cunts working in restaurants talking about, oh, but we start cleaning up the product at like 7.20 because we close at 7.30. No, fuck you. You closed at 7.30. That's when you start cleaning. When I advertise a stand-up show as an hour, I don't do fucking 40 minutes and then start getting out of my stand-up outfit and then start being like, all right, who wants a photo? I finished the fucking show. I don't start packing away the microphone because it's 10 minutes before the show is supposed to end. I do the hour. So grilled, you close when you're closed. You don't start cleaning before you're closed, because that's fucking stupid. Three times in a row, I've done that to the same grill. So I was like, you know what? I am not going back to that grill. Fuck that restaurant. Fuck its employees. Never going back. You just lost yourself a customer that would have spent maybe $13 over the course of a, of, of a fucking couple of months. You know when you really want, like, when you you have the idea to have a food, like a burger or whatever the idea is, and you're like, I'm going to have that shit, and then for some reason you don't have it, you just want it for the rest of the month, that's the shit that happened to me. I was like, I want to go to Grilled, and I want a fucking Wagyu burger. I want that, I want some of that aged cheddar on my fucking beef. Hook me up, Grilled. I'll go in when it says you're open. I mean, that sounds like how it should work. A customer comes in at 7.20. You look at the time and go, oh, is it 7.30? No. Well, then we're open. What would you like, sir? But no. I walk in and they're like, oh, sorry, mate. They give me this motion, the fucking, the, the hands across the throat, like, like there's some kind of Roman executioner. Can't, you're on minimum wage just like me. All right, don't give me that shit. You're open. You're in your uniform. There's five employees there. I don't see anyone mopping. Another classic wear closed symbol. If someone's mopping in a store, I'm not going in. You're closed. Fuck grill. So anyway, I'm like, I'm never going back to that grill. Whatever. I'll never go back. Fine. I won't get my Wagyu burger. I'll just go to a different grilled or a different burger place and then three weeks later go by haven't had my fucking burger haven't even looked at that other grilled because fuck grilled as will be the theme of today's podcast fuck grilled then right a couple days ago i do a gig i do two shot i do two gigs i do my fucking i film a video i do my radio show i do a stand-up gig and then i i go drive with luke to another stand-up gig Hustling hard for you cunts so you get some free content that you can complain about because it comes out. Oh, it's 24 hours late. Uh, I don't pay for it, but it's been Sundays. Fuck you, all right? (laughs) So I finished this gig. And I'm like, sweet. I'm going to get... I start walking down the street and there's a fucking grill. I'm like, no shit. I didn't know there was a grill here. I've never been to this grill. I grilled on Chapel Street. Right outside the comedy room I just did. How fucking convenient. I'm going to go in and I'm going to get myself a Wagyu burger with aged cheddar on my fucking beef. I check the time. I'm like, oh, it's 9.20. Grilled closes here at 9.30. I've got 10 minutes to order a burger. And then they will close. Because that dear listener, is how a fucking shop works. You close when you close. You don't close 10 minutes before you close because then you would have to say you close at 7.20. And then you fucking lazy dogs would probably close at 7.10. You close when you close. So I go into the grill. Lights are on. Doors are open. Customers sitting outside, chairs on the floor, 
Mops, nowhere to be found. Employee at the till. Open, close sign. Switch to open. I walk in. I look at the menu. The guy looks at me. I go, yeah, let me get a... And he goes, sorry, mate, we're closed. No, you're fucking not. Give me my Wagyu burger with my aged cheddar on my beef, you dog. You are fucking open. I can't believe that shit happened to me three weeks later at a different grill. Fuck grilled the franchise. That is 10 minutes why on why fuck grilled. I have no argument other than fuck grilled. But to every store out there, you're closed when you're closed. And don't give me none of that cleaning bullshit. Cleaning happens when you're fucking closed. You don't start cleaning when you open. Because you'd piss off all your customers. If I went to a restaurant, ate half of my meal, and they started cleaning the fucking plate, I'd be like, I'm not done. And they'd be like, oh, sorry, we start cleaning before we close. This is just our process. Fuck your closing process. Don't give me none of that shit. Oh, we start cleaning at this time. Yeah, cool. Clean the areas that don't affect cooking food because you are open. Clean the floor. I don't give a fuck. I'll sleep and break my neck as long as I get my Wagyu burger. But don't start cleaning the grill at fucking 7.20 when you close at 7.30. Fuck grilled. In other news... Valentine's Day is a thing, isn't it? How was your fucking Valentine's Day? Oh, I need to take a bit of a breather. Fuck grill. I should have done it. You know what I should have done? I should have done it like a fucking, uh, like one of those announcers on, on like Smooth FM. There you go. Welcome to Smooth FM and uh, fuck grill. It's, uh, I'm, your, I'm your host, Lewis Spears. And uh, well, look, I've been, to, I've, been to, I've been to grill three times now in a row. And, uh, well, three times in a row they've been open. Well, it seems to me that they've been open, but, uh, I go in and, uh, well, they then tell me that they're closed and I don't get my burger. And, uh, well, that, listeners, is, uh, the theme of today's show. It's Fuck Grill. Uh, so I'm taking calls on 131060. Give me a ring. Uh, if you have any messages for the grill, then, well, I'll read them out here on The Love Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it's Valentine's Day. Um or it was. How was your Valentine's Day, huh? You enjoy your little corporate holiday to sell you flowers? Now nah, fuck that. I like Valentine's Dude, I like You know what I get about this fuck fa- Oh, it's just a corporate holiday to sell flowers. Shut up, you lonely cunt. Buy your girlfriend flowers, alright? It's not a corporate holiday invented to make money. It is a it is a fucking Women's holiday invented to manipulate men, all right? If we're going to be angry about the holiday, let's get it right, okay? Women have been manipulating men to getting them shit for free since the beginning of time. And companies just just noticed, oh, we can make money out of that. That's all. It's not like, oh, fucking Kmart invented Valentine's Day, so I spend money at this time of the year. It's like, no, your girlfriend invented Valentine's Day so she can hint at something that you can't afford and then cry when you don't buy it for it. (laughs) I fucked up, guys. That's not what happened to me, but I fucked up. You know, I think I did this... I think I did this to some, I I gave advice about this very situation to do with someone's birthday, where if someone's like, hey, if they say I don't get you something, you have to get them something, and I didn't follow my own advice, fucked up. Me and my girl, it's Valentine's Day, obviously it was on a, it was like a Wednesday or something, so we don't see each other Wednesdays because I'm on radio, she has a job. Uh, We see each other on the weekend, like both days, the whole day, we just have fucking BFGF time. Uh where I attempt to not work, and and she goes, stop working, pay attention to me, and I go, yeah, yeah, I'm just sending 57 more emails, give me a second, and then, yeah, that's, (laughs) um, yeah, what happened, okay, so it it was like, the, the couple days before, no, it was the weekend before Valentine's, we were both like, hey, so, we can't really see each other on Valentine's Day, and then, 
my girl was like, oh, we should just do Valentine's Day on Saturday and then we can have our own cute little Valentine's Day and it's just for us. I'm like, oh, great. That, that makes a lot of sense. Fuckhead. Trapped. Idiot. Fell for it. Dumb cunt. Never, ever do a holiday on the other day because I'll tell you something, women are emotional creatures. So when they rarely use their logic before their emotions, guys fall for it every fucking time. And they go, oh yeah, this sounds logical to me. This won't change. This isn't going to flip when it comes time for that decision to be made. When it's actually Valentine's Day, she's not going to think, oh, remember when we agreed to do it on Saturday? Oh yeah, that's fine. Today doesn't matter. I don't need to get any gifts. Nah, no. Nah, negative. That's not how it works. Be very careful when women close to you use logic because that logic can quickly turn back into emotions at the drop of a hat because emotions are not logical. And I'm not trying to trash women. We're different for a reason, all right? Emotional beings, wonderful. I I I could I would never be able to do the shit that some girls do. That's why there are so many women teachers because they can engage their emotions with the children and raise them up to be functioning members of society. Dude, if I was in charge of a bunch of 8-year-olds, I would be calling them fucking idiots by the end of 20 minutes. And then meanwhile there's women who do it for 20 years and they're like, "All right, this, this new year level of kids are completely different. I'm going to help them through the year. I'd be like, oh, here comes another pack of cunts. I'm going to give them all Fs for a meme. <laughs> right? So we're like, oh, yeah, we'll do Valentine's Day on, um, on Saturday. So I got, her, I, I got her something today to give to her tomorrow or tonight or whatever. Because that's what we agreed. Right? Meanwhile, like Valentine's Day is coming up. Right? I get a text on Tuesday, the day before Wednesday. Just a text, no context. Hey, here's my work address. And then the address. I saw that and I was like, ah, oh, okay, I have a work address. I guess she wants me to have it. Ooh, fuckhead. Nope, stupid, unintelligent. Missed the giant signal. I don't know why I'm the idiot for not picking up on one of the subtlest hints of all time. She just sends me her address. I'm like, oh, I guess I should know her the address of where she works at in case, you know, anything happens. Uh, and, and instead of being able to go and pick her up, I could get a fucking Uber there and then an Uber back. <laughs> so she sends me a work address. Obviously, now, upon reflection, I was supposed to organize flowers to be sent to her office. But silly me remembered the explicit discussion and agreement to do Valentine's Day on Saturday. I mean, it would be very silly of me to, to, to keep doing the thing that we agreed to do. I'm obviously a fucking idiot here. <laughs> Next day, Valentine's Day, I get a text. All the ladies at work are getting presents delivered to their office. I send back, oh, that's cute. No, no, fucked it up. Bad move. <laughs> oh, that's cute. That text said, all right. I mean, what it literally said was the other women are getting flowers on sent to the office. But what it actually said was, you didn't organize flowers for me, you fucking cunt. Two things were said in these two texts. The address one was, I mean, I mean, literally what it actually said was, hey, uh, this is my address of where I work. But what it actually said, what it actually said was, hey, here's my work address so that you can surprise me with flowers because I know you haven't thought of that, but I've thought of that and I thought it would be a really cute thing to happen to me, but I know that you haven't thought of that idea and you also don't know where my work address is. So here's my work address in case you want to surprise me with flowers and then I can be like, oh my God, he got me flowers and I didn't even coax him into doing it. There was no manipulation at all. What a sweet boyfriend. There you go, mate. A little favor for you to earn some points in the relationship. 
That was the first text. And then the second text, what it actually said was, uh, all the women are getting flowers sent to the office. But what it actually said, <laughs> what it actually said was, you fucking idiot. I told you to get me flowers sent to the office. I gave you my address. I told you to do it. I explicitly stated that I wanted flowers on Valentine's Day, even though we agreed to do it on Saturday. You fucking idiot. I hate you. That's what it actually said, even though what it actually said was, oh, other women are getting flowers. <laughs> uh, we didn't have a fight or anything. I, it's just, uh, she's good like that. But it's just like the fucking, I, I, I did miss out on two gigantic hints and I feel like an idiot but I hooked her up I got a couple of gifts I can't talk about it now because I don't know she needs to get it on the weekend I hope your Valentine's Day was alright guys I hope you didn't fucking <laughs> miss any gigantic hints and then have to pay for it later see my girl's not a psycho she'll she'll drop the the girl hints but then she has enough logic in her to, to not freak out if I don't pick up on it because some girls I've been with have just dropped the girl hint and then done a fucking psychotic breakdown for me not picking up on it. <laughs> I sent you my address. Obviously, that means I wanted a gift. No, you just sent me your address, bitch. <laughs> um, yeah, because I'm always missing shit. Because I'm just a bit of a fuckhead. <laughs> uh, so you know how I lost my wallet. Uh, if you haven't heard the episode where I talked about this, lost my wallet. Um, so I bought a new wallet. Uh, the wallet that I lost had a hundred dollars in it and I lost it with a tile, like a tracker in it that my mum got me because I always lose shit. So she got me, oh, here's a tracker so that if you ever lose it, your phone will be able to find it. So what I did was I was like, great idea, opened up the tracker, put it in my wallet and then... I fucking lost the wallet, but I didn't activate the tile. I was like, oh, I'll activate that later. <laughs> so I lost my wallet, right? With the tile in it like an idiot. Uh, and I don't know. What I thought happened was it was in my pants. I had new pants that were like kind of track pants. So the, the pockets weren't the best. So I, I was like, oh, it must have fallen out of my pocket while I was getting into the car of a shopping center and then fallen into the, into the car park. So I called the shopping center, asked if they had it lost and found. There was a hundred bucks in it. I was like, oh, well, it's probably fucking gone. I had to cancel all of my cards, uh, you know, reset up everything that I was paying for, like the storage unit and, and the podcast payments and all of this fucking work shit, all these monthly payment Dropbox, all that shit that I got to fucking pay for. And it made me realize how much shit I pay for just to tell dick jokes on the internet. But whatever, that's a different thing. It was a fucking bitch. Um, and uh, yeah, three weeks later, I get a text from my girl uh, of a photo of her holding the wallet that I lost. She found it in a car. It was just under the seat. <laughs> Which, I mean, technically makes my new wallet a hundred bucks cheaper. So I think I've come out on top. I'm a fucking idiot. Oh, man. Wasted so much time and money on, a, on buying a new fucking wallet and then getting new cards and all this shit. Oh, man. So I don't know. I don't know what to do with my old wallet. I like that old wallet, but I kind of needed a new one. But I didn't want to buy one. You know what I mean? And now I have this fucking new wallet that I really like. But everyone says it looks like a purse because I mean it's it's got a zip. Kind of looks like a woman's purse. But you know what? Fuck you. I'm gonna keep the purse. Um. So oh man, I'm so fucking pumped for the weekend, dude. I've got a long weekend. We're taking a little break from radio. We've got. Uh, oh, I don't know why this fucking piece of shit keeps pausing. Man, what was I talking about? Fucking camera. Maybe it's, I think it's the SD cards. I got fucked up. SD. I need to buy a whole bunch. I always lose my SD cards. I buy the cheap ones uh, online, but you have to get them from this place, and they're good, but it's a fuck around to buy them, and then I always lose them, or I give them to someone else. I think a whole bunch of other people have them because they're editing shit for me. Oh, anyway, what was I, what was I saying? Lost my wallet. Oh, break from radio. Yeah, so we're having a break from, from radio for a couple of days. Monday, Tuesday, we won't have a show. That will be a permanent thing. We're not going to do Mondays or Tuesdays anymore. Can't say why, but I will tell you that it's we're not getting cancelled, and it's a very good reason. Probably going to announce it 
I don't know, maybe maybe fucking Thursday or Friday on the show next week. But you'll you'll hear about it. I'll post about it. It's a very good thing. Don't freak out if you don't see a radio show for a little bit. Haven't been cancelled because we keep making fun of the show. <laughs> of the station, I mean. Um, you know what needs to stop, man? Fucking cafes. I know I just yelled for 15 minutes about uh, a restaurant, a burger joint, but now it's time to have a... S- I won't yell. All right, fuck grilled. Still the theme of the podcast. Not going to yell though with this one, but it's time to do a half hour on. <laughs> no, it's time to have. You know, I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to get angry about this. I'm going to try my best. It's time to have a serious heart to heart discussion about cafes and what they name their large size cup. Okay, I'm sick. I'm 24, guys. Been along for been been alive for twenty four years. I'm a I'm a grown man. I'm an adult. Okay. I've been on this earth for twenty four years. I'm a big boy now. I don't say, right? I'm an adult man with respect for myself, dignity, and confidence in my actions. So the last thing I want to do. When I walk in to a fucking cafe and I see that they have three sizes of cups, the last, la, when I, when I want a large, I want the biggest size. The last thing I want to say is, hey, can I get a super size? Can I get a super size? No. I don't want to say that shit. If you have three, I'm giving up. I can't be. I can't be calm. If you have three fucking cups, three sizes of cups, it is small, medium, large. That's how it goes. Cafes, small, medium, large. Okay. I'm sick of these fucking places. These weird Melbourne hipster cafes being like small, large, jumbo. That's the worst one. I don't want to walk into a fucking place and say jumbo every day. I want a fucking coffee. It's a large... If you have three sizes, it goes small, medium, large. For some reason, in this fucking state, they do small, large, and then the third one is always a fucking dumb name that an eight-year-old would come up with. I don't want that shit. I don't want to say jumbo. I'm 24 years old. I don't say jumbo. I'm a man. And a man says large. Don't make me say jumbo. Fuck jumbo. I don't want to say super size. I walked into one place and there were like a mega size. Mega size. I'm 24. Give me a fucking large. Don't make me say mega like I'm eight. A mega size. No. If you have if you have three sizes, it goes small, medium, large. Not small, large, super jumbo, mega size. I'm 24. Fuck you. It's a large. I don't get it. If you have four, if you have four sizes, sure. Call them, call the biggest, like small, medium, large. Call the other one whatever the fuck you want. Hey, what's the one bigger than the large called? Oh, that's called the the fucking Jumbotron. Yeah, can I get a Jumbotron? I would order that happily. But don't come to me like you've got some fucking... Like you th- like you don't want to use medium? That's what it is. There goes small, large Jumbo. Where's medium, bro? That's what medium is for. There is the small version... There is the large version, and then there is the the version between that, medium. That's the definition of medium, bro. Use it. Use the fucking 
word for what it's for. Don't try and tell me that your medium is a large when it's in the middle of two things. That's medium, bro. I'm 24. I'm not saying jumbo. I'll walk into your place and I'll order. What I do is I point at the biggest one and I go, yeah, can I get a large? And the next time some cunt goes, oh, sorry, this is a large. Did you mean the jumbo? I mean, no. Did you mean the large? (laughs) How about that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start fucking correcting cafes. Yeah, hey, can I get the uh, the large? Oh, no, no, this is the large. Did you mean the jumbo? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, there's no jumbo, all right? And that's not a large. That's the one in the middle. That's, a, that's the definition of a fucking medium. That is a, that is a, that is a medium fucking... That's a medium cup, you fucking cunt. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't try and tell me that the one in the middle is a large when it's the middle. Medium. That's the def. I've said that so many times, I'm going to fucking Google it and read it. If you're a barista and you work at one of these shithole fucking places, medium definition. Jeez, how do you spell definition? Definitely not like that. Spell it deaf in the ocean. <laughs> Me dumb in ocean. <laughs> medium. Okay. Here's the definition of medium for you cafe cunts. Halfway between two extremes of size. Halfway. If you have three medium is in the fucking middle don't small medium jumbo me i'm 24 i don't say jumbo anymore never again if some cunt says that's a jumbo size i'm leaving i'm out the door gone never coming back say goodbye to your regular customer you know what else gets me extra large no no that's what you call the fourth one If you have three, you don't have a small and a large and an extra large. Excuse me. No, you don't. You have a small and a medium and a large. If you then have four cups, one bigger than a large, that is an extra large. You cunt. Don't give me this shit. That's a medium. If you want to be like an extra medium... (laughs) That could be a large. Fuck you. You know what else I don't want to do? I don't want to go to a a fucking... I don't want to go to a place that has names instead of uh, fucking rooms. Hey, what room am I in? Oh. You're in the Davidson. Oh, am I? Am I in the Davidson? That's convenient. How about when I'm when I'm walking through the halls of your hotel and I instead of seeing numbers one through six and I go I'm number four, I'll just go one, two, three, four, and I know exactly where I'm going. I just got a name now. And I gotta fucking guess where that would be in between is the Davidson in between the Margaret and the Mary? Or is it in between the Thompson and the fucking other name I can't think of? I'll just take a guess, will I? Instead of using the tried and true numerical system that we all abide by and understand. Your hotel is different and every one of your rooms has a name. Even though I'm only paying $150 a night. Because it's a shithole pretending to be a nice place by giving all of their rooms names. You don't name a shitty room. That's like naming a pig on a farm that you're going to eat. That's not Tim. That's dinner. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. Should we get into miscellaneous bit at the end? Is there anything else that I wanted to talk about instead of fucking yelling about food? Um, uh, Where are we? 
Uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. Oh, I'll yell about that next week. Yeah, all right. Let's do miscellaneous bit at the end. Um, let's start it off with a... On a high note, shall we? Nice, happy one. School makes me miserable. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. All right. Hey, Lewis. Love your shit. Pump for the special. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. Now for the topic of the email. Ah, oh, fuck. You'd think you'd start with that. Uh, <laughs> uh, for about a year now, I've struggled with something like depression, which led to self-harm. I oh, don't do that, mate. That's fucking stupid. Um... I've been able to stop the self-harm. Oh, well, he's a fucking genius. What do you want help with? Uh, but I've realized that school is a massive part of what makes me miserable. I believe this is because I don't plan on taking a standard career path as I want to be passionate about my work because it will be a big chunk of my life. Yeah, probably the fucking what you do most of the time. Do people not realize that? That, that work, like your job, is actually going to be most most of what you do. Nine to five is eight hours. You have sleep, hopefully, eight hours. Or, you know, even if you sleep in six hours, waking up and going to sleep is basically, that's an hour each side. You have eight hours is dedicated to sleeping, waking up and going to sleep, right? So you only have 16 hours where you're conscious doing shit. Eight hours of that, at least, right? Eight hours is your job. Two hours is going to and from your job. That's 10 hours of your day. You've got six left. An hour of that eating, an hour of that getting ready. Going to work, taking your work clothes off. Now you've got three hours for you. So if you don't love your job, you're going to be spending 10 to 12 hours getting ready for, dressing up, traveling to, doing, coming home, getting undressed, work. If people don't set themselves up to enjoy what they're going to be spending 12 hours a day getting ready for and doing, yeah, you're going to be fucking uh, uh, not a happy chappy. That's why I don't understand this work-life balance shit. There is no work-life balance, man. If you have a, a fucking regular office job. I mean, my life is balanced in the sense that... Well, it's not balanced. All I do is work. But for me, that's living. Like, I love this shit. So I'm good. Whereas when I was in a fucking office, I hated that. Have you heard me you heard me fucking yell about work? Anyway. I'm getting a text here. Is this important? Uh, oh, I wish I could do this on... Um, I'll answer that later. I'm answering this question now. Um, right. Sorry, I should have, I should edit that out, but <laughs> I fucking won't. <laughs> All right, about a year now. Blah blah. blah depression. Uh, blah, blah. Uh, I hate school. I want to be passionate about my work because it'll be a big chunk of my life. Right attitude to have. You're 100 percent correct. What I'm really interested in is rap, and although I'm terrible at it now, I really think that with time and persistence, I can make it into something. Yeah, again, you're in school, you've just started, you're going to suck, you got the right attitude. Keep doing it, you'll be not shit anymore. I just don't know if I should continue to try in school in fear of my parents looking down on me if I don't. Should I just stop trying and focus on what I love? Any advice is appreciated. Have an absolutely, unconditionally, fundamentally shit one. <laughs> uh... Yes. Yeah. You fucking should. Don't stop going to school. Uh, keep going to school. But uh, honestly, have a look at what you're being taught and pick and choose what you're going to pay attention to. So, for example, uh, when I was in high school, I, I was the same attitude. I was like, oh, school makes me sad. I don't know why. Uh School, for someone who knows they don't want to live an academic life. So say if you want to be a scientist and that's your passion, yeah, school the fuck out of it, bro. Go to school, go to uni, become a doctor or a scientist or whatever. School the fuck out of it. But if you want to be a rapper, man, and you know 
that's what you want to do, fuck school. And and what I mean by that is, uh, if if they if if you have math class, uh, learn math to the point where you know, you could do. Plus minus times tables, division. That's all you need. You don't need any of that calculus shit if you want to be a rapper. You want to know how many plays you're getting on SoundCloud, how much money you're losing by buying studio time, and uh, how mu- how much you can you can times how much money you would wa- you would make if you were selling tickets for twenty bucks and there was a hundred people there. That's all you need to know. That's all. Um. Whereas music. Pay attention to that. If you know what you want to do and you're in high school, don't drop out, but just pick and choose what you're paying attention to and start now. Be shit. Put stuff up on SoundCloud. Lil Pump is 17 and he is one of the fastest growing artists in the world. Regardless of what you think about Lil Pump's music, he's 17 and he's shitting on your dream. He's doing big poos on what I'm doing. That kind is touring the fucking world at 17 because he knows how to say Gucci Gang cooler than anyone else. Regardless of what you think of the song, that amount of success at 17 is amazing and something that you should look up to. 17, bro, and he's touring the world, making millions of dollars. And that's what you can get if you start now. I'm not saying that it will happen. Probably won't happen, but it could. I started uploading videos when I was 18 in the last, well, at the start of the year of uh, of my year 12. When I was 18, it was the start of the year 12. I was like, I don't want to do any of these things. I want to be a comedian. I want to perform on stage and I like pissing people off and I'm good at doing it in a funny way. What can I do? Started uploading videos on YouTube, started trolling on Facebook, doing all that kind of shit, getting as many people looking at me as possible on social media, using a $100 webcam and a phone. National headlines, videos getting hundreds of thousands of views. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying it's possible. Start now in high school. Don't drop out. Just pick and choose what you're paying attention to because uh, the social experience of high school is very important. I learned, you know, you learn how to talk to cunts. If I didn't know how to talk to people, and I'm not the best at it, um, you'd be fucked because talking and networking, unfortunately, is part of the game. So yeah, man, just pick and choose what you're paying attention to. Stay in school, but don't try hard at science if you know you want to fucking rap, try hard at music or try hard in media so that you have an idea of how to film a film clip and then just learn everything you can about social media, how to record on the cheap in your bedroom. Don't worry about paying money for studio time and paying people to mix. Learn all that shit yourself while you're making no money like I did. I've only just now started getting other people to film and edit my shit. I've been doing it for four, five years now. Filming, editing, writing, all of my shit. I will obviously only ever write my own shit. But filming and editing, you can export to somebody else when you no longer have the time and you have the money to pay for it thanks to Patreon. Hint, hint. Jump on there. Early access to everything. (laughs) Uh, So yeah. Don't drop out, but fuck your parents. Fuck mum and dad. Uh, And if they start being assholes about it, get a shitty job and move out when you leave school and you're the master of your own life. People do that shit every day. If you want to be a rapper, uh, it'll give you something to fucking rap about. Uh, My parents don't like me. My life is shit. So I moved out and my life's still shit. And then everyone will be like, yeah, my life sucks too. I'll share that on SoundCloud. Next thing you know, you little pump. Just don't rhyme shit with shit, and I reckon you'll be all right. Best of luck. Um. All right, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna answer the last question with Jazz about the girl being tall. I'm gonna do that now. Cut, and I'll be with her or or some shit. I don't know. It might be video, it might be audio. Who fucking knows? All right. Um. Editing magic starts now. All right, I found Jazz, and she's going to help us with this question. Welcome to the podcast, Jazz. Hello. Hi. Um, 
All right, so this is a question from a listener called Samantha, and she has a problem because she's very tall, and I figured you're very tall, you're six foot one, mm -hmm. so you could probably help better than I could. What's wrong with being tall? Um, well, we're going to find out. Um, <laughs> well, so you're taller than me. That's true, but I'm not a girl. I think the, I think the main problem is... Uh, so she's got a problem because she's because tall. Because she's a woman. So is the problem that she's a woman. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. that's also I'm not a problem. What's the problem? What's right. Samantha's problem? The problem is... Um, uh, I, do you have any tips on making friends? She's come to the wrong place. Um, I struggle because I'm tall and I have resting bitch face. Mm -hmm. So I've been told I come off as intimidating when I'm actually just really shy and I'm too scared to start up a conversation. But I love chatting to people. I just get super anxious trying to start the conversation. Okay. Um, so I'm guessing that Samantha is kind of young. Um, Wait, so what's her problem? Her problem is she comes off as intimidating uh, and she has resting bitch face. But I think the, the real issue is uh, young guys in particular get intimidated by women that are taller than them. But is she talking about guys or is she talking about making friends? Just making friends. Okay. So her problem is that she's making, she's having trouble making friends. Yeah, and she's too shy to start up a conversation. And she thinks that because she's tall and she has resting bitch face, these are the reasons that it's causing her a problem because she's seeming intimidating? Yeah. Okay. She said, I struggle because I'm tall and I have resting bitch face, so I come off as intimidating, is what she's been told. Well, I don't know. You can't... Who cares what you look like? Everyone is going to make a first impression on everyone based on what they look like. Yeah. You can't help if you're tall and people think that's strange or if you have resting bitch face and people are interpreting your face as not friendly. You can't help that. People will make the first impression that they're going to make. Yeah, I've been, I've been told that. I don't um, think the problem is that she's tall. Like, you shouldn't have got me on just because this girl's tall, you're tall, No, Jazz. but you've, you've said this. Like, some people sometimes find you intimidating but because you're tall. But that's got nothing tall. to do with my height. I'm no. just an intimidating person. Just because you're a bit of an asshole. <laughs> I am a bit of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> told, apparently, I seem like a know-it-all. But then I'm also told that I usually do know what I'm, everything. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking to uh, nth level genius on the uh -huh. podcast. It's a, a Reddit. I'm very smart. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> so we've come to the wrong person. We've just come to an arrogant woman. Okay. <laughs> so the problem is, it's not. Don't worry that you're tall or have resting bitch face. People, if they're making a first judgment based on the first impression, you can't do. You can never control that. No. The 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 first impression is just what. It is. I mean, if you look like what you look like, you're going to have to figure out a way to deal with it. And I don't think that's your problem. I think maybe you're just way too shy starting yeah. a conversation. So people <clears> are like, you are you don't know what to say. And people interpret that as, oh, she doesn't want to talk to me. And then that's when they might go, oh, and she's also really tall. And yeah. Like, oh, she thinks that it's too difficult. I think, yeah, the, the, if you're wanting to make friends, there's just a level of shy that makes it impossible to make friends it, yeah. you can't expect to make friends if you're not talking to people it's, yeah it makes sense it's common yeah you're see you're like people have told you that you come off as intimidating and you're like how can i intimidate people i'm shy uh so really, that's Lewis, why you're you intimidating completely people completely the wrong person because i am not shy at all yeah i yeah. can go into if i want to mm. go into a room and make six friends yeah with complete strangers Friends, but, really? How many friends? How many? Hey. <laughs> how many friends? How many of those no, no, six no. friends would you actually see outside? That's what I'm saying. Is what? What's your definition of a friend? Someone that you actually want to hang out with. Well, that's the thing. I'm very discerning with that, and I probably just want to hang out with you and yeah. my one other friend. Yeah. But that's okay. not what I'm saying. There's a, there's being shy. Yeah. And being able to make acquaintances, which then can develop into friendships. I think you're. So I'm very outgoing. I'm very good at that. If I want to be, otherwise, I'm just like. <laughs> Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> I'll go yeah. hang out with Lewis alone, like Pretty in my much. bedroom, like we are now. Just hanging Couple out of alone all weekend. Chatting about how good they are. Uh -huh. Is basically what this has been. I'm very smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that your shyness is intimidating people because you, when you Don't meet worry. someone, you freak out and you're like, oh, what do I say? Well, and it's like, there's nothing <clears throat> to say. Just say hello. Well, I don't know. Don't think that her shyness is intimidating people. Just don't. Don't say that it's causing a problem aside from how can you 
expect to make friends if you haven't developed being able to go past that. I feel really... I, I don't know what it's like to be shy. Lewis, you probably know much more. Yeah, I went through that when I, I was younger. I don't where... know how would you make friends if you aren't going and talking to them. You need to be you able can't. to get past. That's why, yeah, I went through a... a if you're looking yeah. for friends, you have to figure out a way that you can talk to people. I went through a period I, in high school where I didn't have any friends and it, was, it wasn't it was because I was tall or because I was an asshole. It was because mm-hmm. I just didn't talk to people. Mm. Like and Lewis I has resting bitch face as well. Do I? No, your resting face is actually like resting unintelligent face. <laughs> You're a fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you just see your face, but it's all blank. You just thought, I was like, oh yeah, he has an IQ of under 70. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, that's retarded. Um, yeah, so you don't... See, Jazz is intimidating because she says shit like that and people take it to heart. I don't think... <laughs> I don't think you're intimidating. I think you just your shyness comes across as oh she doesn't want to talk to no, me because you're not saying as anything. Standoffish and aloof. Yeah. yeah. Which. Um, so you just need you need to figure out a way to open up to strangers, not tell them your be, life story, just you know, talking to them. And difficult. The only, I'd imagine that's yeah. very difficult if that's is. not your natural mode of operating. Wait, so, how sad is this? When I was yeah. when I was struggling with talking to new people, mm. and 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 especially talking to girls, I literally. When, when I was in a shopping center, I was like, I'm going to start a conversation with four girls. Mm-hmm. And I did that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's not hard at all. Okay. First few times I did it, I was nervous as fuck. Okay. Like, I just walked up to one chick and I was like, hey, you look nice today. And mm, then... Creepy. Yeah, weird. Yeah. But creepy. Fucking strange. Lewis. But, creepy. But okay. that gave me the perspective to be like, oh... That was creepy as fuck. <laughs> but I didn't know that before until I tried it. So what I'm saying is go hit on a stranger in a no, supermarket. And maybe go, if you can go to somewhere that there's no um, consequences, right? Like you can yeah, that was go weird, yeah. and you can say, oh, maybe you're going to a party or you're doing something where you're not surrounded by the people that you normally see. Yeah. And you can try out your, your skills of socializing like Lewis did very awkwardly apparently. oh yeah that was fucking asperger's ass um but yeah you <laughs> need a wretch resting dumb face yeah but fr- from there i worked it out and now i can talk to can anyone at any time and i confidence. feel fine i think that's the thing is that samantha if you think that you're really shy you don't know there might be 50 percent of the room is also really shy and there could be someone there who could be your best friend that you guys have both never talked because someone needs to be the first person to talk. Oh yeah, acting shy is just is like you're wasting opportunities to well, no, make don't, f- don't make shame. friends. You're shy shaming. Well, no, I'm telling her the truth. Like you can't sit in the corner of a room and not talk to anyone because you don't know what to say. Like everybody has those feelings, but the only way to figure it out is to go and put yourself out of your comfort zone and otherwise you're all, otherwise yeah. you're going to end up being 23 and, and unable to talk to girls <laughs> like or <this>. guys <laughs> and that's pathetic no i can talk to people very well i just choose not to now and when you have that yeah. freedom of choice then you could be no i'm not i'm not shy I'm i just, just don't like asshole. you <laughs> yeah we do that all the time and here's the here's the other thing is that um i'm not sure if you're shy because you're just naturally an introvert and you don't want to talk which in that case you probably wouldn't be writing about wanting to make friends. Yeah. Probably. The, the thing is that you might be concerned that people would reject you first. Um, you reject you, so you reject them first. That's kind of what that level of being shy is. But the thing is that if you censor yourself and if you don't be the true you, then whatever friends you do make aren't going to know the true you, which means you're going to have to keep on censoring yourself. Yeah, you'll either, you'll and you have to, a pretend friendship yeah, that have, when you feel comfortable, oh, I can be me now, they'll be like, oh, that's not who I thought this person yeah, was. Yeah, you, you just have to go in there and be unapologetically yourself, whether that's a really shy person or a really loud, outlandish person. Like, all my friends know, that's just Jasmine. She's not intentionally an asshole. <laughs> and if you go talk to her about it, she'll be like, oh... Sorry, I didn't mean to call your boyfriend that we've only met twice really dumb during a game of charades. Yeah, I yeah, Jazz did that to someone. <laughs> just recently. She called a stranger an idiot hey, like I've three times. Him, and I had I, to 
You've met him twice no, no, no. for 20 so minutes. The, the and you're like, you're an idiot. No, that's not what happened. <laughs> we were playing, what is it? Um, playing some stupid game. Some stupid word game. Yeah. And the prompt was dumb people. And we'd had this ongoing joke. Yeah, that was rude as no, fuck. No, just let me explain. Okay. The ongoing joke was that he was a dumb, which is not at all, which is why Was that the fine. ongoing joke or you're, was that the thing that you kept again. saying? Well, that was know. your ongoing joke that you kept well, saying. Well, Lewis, you write jokes and apparently they're jokes, so I'm allowed to do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I get paid for it and I'm on stage when I say it. I don't, I don't start joking <laughs> about dream world tragedies at parties. <laughs> I've heard you do that. No, I haven't. <laughs> so, the prompt was dumb people and there'd been the ongoing joke that he was dumb. So, you're not allowed to talk and you have to... No, wait, you're not allowed to use the word. So, I was just like... This guy, like, what's he? This guy. And no one got no it. No one got it. Because it was not an ongoing and, and joke. And also... <laughs> and <then laughs> As if it was an ongoing joke, everyone would have be been like, oh, he's dumb. And then we all would have laughed together. And um, the only person, the only other complete arsehole who was there was Lewis. So Lewis goes, oh, Jasmine, you mean dumb people. <laughs> you yeah. get me? And, I, and then I had to hilarious. say... No, then I had to say, sorry, mate. Uh, I didn't guess that because I think you're dumb. I knew that because I know my girlfriend's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but so if this chick wait. can make friends, yeah, I reckon you'll be alright. Yeah, if I can make right. friends, if I can make friends and keep friends, I've had some really close friends for a very long time, and they're okay with it. And when they introduce me to other people, I think that they give the other people a heads up. So, yeah. By the way, just stick with her. She's okay. <laughs> Yeah, not, she doesn't mean it. You just have to be yourself and then people will either accept you and love you or you won't be friends with them and that's fine. You're not going to be friends no, with everyone. You know what? You with with dating, there's with some rejection that can feel bad but with friendship, there is no such thing as friendship with rejection because well, no, no, no one walks up to someone else and is like, will you be my friend? It's <laughs> It happens organically I've by... I've friend dumped people before though. Yeah, but that's different. You've ne- you've never that's like rejection in friendship. Yeah, but that's after the friendship has started because someone's been an asshole or whatever. Well, they weren't but, an asshole. Well, you're an asshole. It's different. <laughs> oh yeah, so no someone's one's, been an asshole. What I'm saying is, no one's ever walked up to someone unless like over the age of seven and been like, "Do you want to be my friend? I would love to take you on a friendship trip." Like no <laughs> one does that. It's just like, "Hey, do you want to go bowling?" Because you guys like each other. So don't, you're, I think no, you're just overthinking it. There. Just, just maybe choose someone and try and talk to them. Be like, I'm going to talk to one person today and yeah. maybe see if you can make them laugh. You know, just have a chuckle. Just try, try out your powers. Unfortunately, if you are the type of person who wants to be able to make friends with people, but it's not coming naturally, I think it's just something you have to practice. You just have to learn. You can because you can be shit at it. Like yeah, I sucked at fine. it, and then you and then you learn, and, and then you go, oh, it's not that hard. And do not worry about being tall, because I'm six foot one, and do I have resting bitch face? Uh, no, you just have like resting bitch personality. <laughs> if you don't keep it in check, you just come across it's as an true. asshole. It's true. I have to try. Which is like, way worse. It is. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey. that girl looks like an asshole versus that chick is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> at least I don't accidentally insult all of the um, serving staff at my workplace. Yeah. Thought you insulted the. Did I do that? The tech, and then you said you also insulted the. Oh yeah, the, I insulted um, the cleaner. I think I talk, I can't remember if I talked about that on radio. I talked about it on radio. I can't remember if I talked about it in the podcast. But I've, yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine, Samantha. Yeah. How old is she? I don't know. She seems young. I I feel like this is a young person's problem. Um. But yeah. Yeah, she says she loves chatting to people. It's a long shot, but if you ah oh, have a shit one, have a shit one to you too, Samantha. Yeah, you too, Don't Samantha. Worry about it. Have a fucking shit one. Hit on someone in a supermarket. You'll be right. <laughs> All right, that's the end of the podcast, guys. Thanks for joining me, Jazz, and for everyone else listening. I'll see you next week. Have uh, a, a horrendously shit house one. Very shit. <laughs>